lekhi is algal abhishek broad topic and uh, at my level points so what is mean by algal biofuel why this uh, uh, topic is uh, more currently having uh, importance and how we can develop algal biofuel as a future fuel that point we will discuss today for everyone knows uh, algal systems are uh, most important for the development of today's uh, biofuel as compared to the other higher plants which can also be the uh, petrol plant for the generation of the biofuel so before uh, we discuss further i am just briefing about the algae so you know that uh, as you are a uh, doc, uh, as you are a phd students everyone knows about the algae but as a part of this lecture i am just uh, briefing here they are photosynthetic lower plants they can synthesize their own food material because they having pigment system and that's why they are autotrophic photosynthetic organisms some of them are prokaryotic and most of them are eukaryotic organism for example you can see here this is spirulina this one is oscillatoria which are the prokaryotic one which belongs to blue green algae or cyanobacteria and the rest of the organisms belonging to a different divisions like a brown algae pheophyta or a red algae rhodophyta or green algae chlorophyta they are all are eukaryotic in nature and one of the representative member is the clamadamonos you can see here in this uh, photograph these are microscopic as well as the uh, macroscopic organisms so some organisms can be seen by our naked eyes for example seaweed marine algae so most of the marine algae as you can see here this is ulva or other marine algae uh, sargassum or gracilaria all these are the macroscopic green algae that can be uh, seen by our naked eyes there is no need to uh, use a microscope for their uh, um, morphological observations uh, some other microscopic organisms like this this is a cytonema and these are some uh, algal mats where there are a number of microalgae and for morphometric or for a morphological observations of such microscopic organism we need microscope high resolution microscope for good photography so this was this was brief about the algae then what are the algal products what are the benefits of the algae when we are dealing with the algal systems what products we can obtain at commercial level so algae can be used as a source of food it can also be used as a source of feed in aquaculture particularly for aquatic animals number of that can be used in the cosmetics there are number of pigments for example chlorophyll pigments are there then carotenoids pigments are there and there are some kinds of water soluble pigment like phycocyanin and phycoerythrin which can be extracted simply with the help of water and they having their commercial importance so pigment systems are most important here because they can be used in the product also then as you know as a botanist to agar agar the importance of agar agar alginate and carrageenan so these are obtained from marine seaweed agar agar can be obtained from rhodophyta member alginates can be obtained from pheophyce member and again carrageenan is one more product which is obtained from algae they are essential organisms for uh, to sequestration as you know that there is a more pollution the carbon dioxide level is continuously increasing so like other plants algae can also contribute towards the co2 sequestration as they are capturing carbon dioxide and uh, they are using co2 captured co2 in the process of photosynthesis then the most uh, hot topic nowadays we are uh, reading in the newspaper Uh, uh about the biofuel production so in biofuel production particularly algae are most promising organism as compared to the other now what are the reasons why algae are more most promising organisms as compared to the other uh, higher plants or petrol plants that we will discuss in coming ppts so uh before algae as a alternative source to the fossil fuels people were trying with the different organisms so first generation biofuel is the second generation biofuel is there and there is a third generation biofuel which contributes algae here and there is a one more generation but we will uh, talk about that later on so in the first generation biofuel most of the edible feed stocks were used like a palm plant or sunflower oil or canola 
oil or other uh, plant seeds oil uh, which were edible so due to the competition of this uh, such kind of a food crops with the other uh, traditional food this uh, option was updated by the non edible feed stock so later on second generation crop were used for the biofuel production because as compared to the first generation biofuel second generation biofuel includes such a plants which can be grown on uh, arable land or which can be uh, grown in a such land which is not uh, in a utilization like jatropha or castor bean or tung plant where banjar banjar land can be utilized which is not used for the production or for the yield of any other crop plant that land can be utilized here for the growth and development of this organism but in both the cases uh, they take more years uh, for a seeding purpose basically and that's why as compared to the uh, microalgae these organisms takes more time for the uh, maturation and uh, there is a low yield comparatively of the lipid in this organism and that's why people were in a search of other kind of the alternative uh, organisms that can give more biomass within a limited time period that should be easy to handle and there should be no more land requirement like in india india is one of the populated country as you know so for the construction purposes as well as for the agriculture practices we need more and more land so the available land is a fixed it cannot be expanded so in available land piece if we are using this kind of the practices for the biofuel generation uh, then there will be no more land available for the human settlement and that's why people were in a search of other organisms that can reduce the land use cost as well as the land use and that's why microalgal organisms were considered as the third generation uh, organisms because they accumulate more lipid and we can yield the lipid also under certain as an alternative option for other earlier organisms which were considered in a first generation as well as in a second generation now uh, how we can use this algal organism for the generation of the biofuel so when we are talking about biofuel basically it includes different kinds of a fuel that uh, considered as a biogas biogas is the one kind of the fuel then bioethanol then biodiesel and one more hydrogen so as these are the photosynthetic organism with the help of light and available carbon dioxide they can capture the carbon dioxide and they uh, possess the uh, process of photosynthesis through which food material is synthesized and through several metabolic processes through anaerobic digestion there will be a biogas production after utilization of the algal biomass after fermentation of the algal biomass we can generate bioethanol as lipid contains more and more lipid uh, algal algal material contains more lipid or there is a more lipid accumulation inside the algal cells that can be later on converted into biodiesel so there is one process conversion of lipid into biodiesel that we will discuss coming in coming ppt and uh, through certain kind of a changes uh, we can produce a hydrogen also so hydrogen biodiesel bioethanol sometimes we can say uh, biomethanol also and biogas these all are included under the biofuel so i am not going to discuss all these kinds of the biofuel that means biogas bioethanol Uh, and hydrogen restricting myself to a biodiesel production basically because it will take more time to explain each and every uh, aspect of the biofuel so we will see more details about the biodiesel in coming ppt so why algae why to choose algae why algae are more superior organism than the other first generation and second generation organism so algae are promising alternative to ending fossil fuels we know that fossil fuel is limited and after few years maybe 20 30 50 years fossil fuel is going to end so people are in search what will be the other alternative for the fossil fuel so this is a promising alternative organisms uh, in the form of algae then algae can be considered as a carbon neutral source 
Why it is considered as a carbon neutral source? Because algae can capture carbon dioxide. It is utilized in the for, uh, uh, photosynthesis through photosynthesis. Food material is synthesized. Then lipid is synthesized. That a lipid we are extracting. That extracted lipid is then converted into biofuel. Biofuel will be utilized in the vehicle through the burning of this biofuel. There, there will be release of carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide will be again reutilized by the microscopic and macroscopic algal organisms, and that's why it is considered as the carbon neutral source because the process, uh, the process of photosynthesis is uh, regularly happening with the help of sunlight and carbon capture organisms, and there is no more uh, carbon uh, emission through the Uh, biodiesel production and utilization so in india there are a number of uh, companies which are producing biofuel but in most of the companies uh, algae as a raw material is not used they are either using vegetable uh, vegetables or other uh, waste material as a raw material for the developing of or for the producing of a biofuel particularly bioethanol but there is a one company reliance industries limited they are working on a microalgae based uh, biodiesel or biofuel uh, production but it they could not launch their uh, product in the market but otherwise there are number of a biofuel company in india also and one of the leading company is uh, i think imami agrotech limited imami agrotech limited is one of the leading company from india side which is producing more biofuel particularly from india here now what is mean by biodiesel we will focus uh, our discussion now towards the biodiesel okay i am not dealing now with the biofuel as a whole we will discuss more about the one of the biofuel biodiesel so when i am talking about the biodiesel what is the meaning of biodiesel or what is biodiesel so in chemical uh, means biodiesel is nothing but uh, esters of long chain fatty acid i am saying esters of long chain fatty acid so where this fatty acids are present this fatty acid is one of the component which is present in a lipid molecule doesn't matter the lipid is present or extracted from algae or from other plant but we are dealing here with the microalgal organism so definitely i am talking about the lipid from algae so in a lipid basically there are two more component one is the glycerol and one more component is fatty acid so lipids are nothing but the fatty acid esters of glycerol and when we are extracting lipid then we have to uh, convert that extracted lipid into biodiesel so how we can convert that bio, uh, lipid into biodiesel we will uh, see in a coming ppt why this biodiesel is superior from the algal organism because biodiesel is uh, biodiesel is the biodegradable it is a renewable source low emission profile as well as low carbon footprint and that's why biodiesel is considered as uh, more superior fuel than the fossil fuel nowadays so you can see here with the help of a photosynthesis they are produ producing number of metabolites inside the living algal cells and one of the component is lipid that lipid can be extracted that can be converted into a algal oil and this algal oil can be utilized into the vehicle so uh, i am explaining here how we can uh, produce how we can develop a biodiesel from algal organism so most important here is the extraction of a lipid okay so when we are extracting anything out of algal organisms we have to crush that organism now uh, if there is good cell disruption there will be more extraction of a lipid if there is no more cell rupture there will be less extraction of lipid so depending on this cell rupture a uh, method what kind of a method you are using for the rupture of the cell wall of the algal material depending on that there will be more extraction of the lipid so if you have this algal material you have to crush it in a fine powder now you can crush it in a different way if there is a good crushing if there will be good 
extraction of the lipid otherwise there will be no more recovery of the lipid remember so which method you are using for the rupturing of the cell wall that will give you more recovery of the lipid out of it so you can see here just i have shown here a uh, model and pestle just for uh, making the powder out of uh, algal sample and this is uh, one of the solvent system i can say you can use um, uh, other solvent system also like a dcm dichloromethane but i am using here chloroform and methanol as a uh, mixture solvent system and with the help of this solvent system easily we can extract lipid in industrial level also we can uh, use a chemical reaction method for the extraction of lipid but the most important point you should not forget if there is a more rupture of the cell wall there will be more recovery of the lipid if there is no more rupture of the cell wall there will be less recovery of the lipid so in industry when we are looking for more and more lipid out of the algal sample we have to take care that the cell is sufficiently broken with the help of any cell wall rupture method so uh we can take this uh, powdered or crushed uh, algal sample and uh, we can use different method that i have already discussed and then you can uh, mix it with the help of a solvent system now in chloroform uh, we can mix this algal powder because in a chloroform uh, lipid is soluble so your cell is already ruptured and you are using a uh, chloroform methanol as a mixture this is a method of bleach and dye which is the most popular method for the lipid extraction number of methods are there but a uh, good one is the bleach and dye method okay so bleach and dye method says chloroform and the methanol can be used in a different proportion 2 as to 1 proportion or 1 as to 1 proportion or you can change the proportion of the chloroform and methanol out of it chloroform uh, is a good solvent system for the extraction of the lipid out of algal cell so we are taking uh, algal material and we are mixing it with the help of chloroform and methanol for some time after that where there is the lipid that lipid will be extracted in the solvent system but out of these two solvent chloroform and methanol this chloroform contains lipid extracted lipid now once the lipid is lipid is extracted in a one container say for example a flask or any beaker or any container that you are using for the extraction purpose basically then how to separate out a chloroform layer containing lipid so once lipid is extracted but along with chloroform containing lipid there is a methanol also so with the help of a separating funnel here that you can see you can pour that mixture along with the lipid into the separating funnel you can see here two different layers the upper one is the methanol layer or other uh, water or other uh, immiscible solvent system and the lower one is the chloroform layer so this chloroform layer contains lipid that easily we can separate outside in a another container so easily we can separate out a lipid which is present in the chloroform layer so simply you can separate out this chloroform layer lower layer is nothing but the chloroform layer so we can easily separate out in a different container and further you can extract the lipid out of uh, chloroform so uh, once uh, chloroform layer is separated outside in a different container that can uh, use for the evaporation so in uh, rotary evaporator if you know about the rotary evaporator have you seen this is it visible yes sir yes sir yes sir so this is a rotary evaporator you can i uh, use this rotary evaporator for the evaporation of the uh, chloroform okay and at the bottom of this uh, round round bottom flask there will be only lipid so in this way we can extract outside lipid from the algal cell with the help of bleach and dye method where we are using chloroform and methanol as a mixture system isn't it so once a uh, lipid is extracted then with the help of electronic balance we can uh, calculate the percentage of the lipid that that means 
how much alcohol powder you had taken for the lipid extraction and how much uh, lipid you have extracted uh, that you can express in terms of the percentage so percentage of lipid extracted you can simply calculate by simple uh, mathematical calculations then once the lipid is extracted these lipids are not volatile component they are not easily evaporating they are not volatile one so what kind of fatty acids are present in the lipid huh? we don't know but we have to uh, identify the type of a fatty acid because once you know the type of fatty acid present in a lipid then you can decide whether this algal material or this algal sample is a good source for further biofuel production or not so once you know the fatty acid profile then you can decide whether you have to go with the this particular algal species or not depending on the fatty acid composition but how you will come to know the fatty acid composition so you have extracted lipid now we have to know about the fatty acid composition so how we can uh, make a profile of a fatty acid out of a lipid so fatty acid can be separated outside or the composition of the fatty acid in a lipid can be known with the help of a gas chromatograph gc okay but directly in a gc we cannot use a lipid because lipids are not a volatile component and gas chromatography is typically for the volatile component and that's why it's our responsibility to convert extracted lipid into a volatile form so how we can do that so simply we can do that with the help of a one process or chemical reaction known as the transesterification so what is happening in a transesterification there are number of a protocols used for the transesterification and number of a so, uh, uh, catalyst are available people are trying number of catalyst for a transesterification process but simply i have used here uh, scl and methanol so methanolic scl can be used for transesterification so lipid is available with us now we have to uh go for the transesterification isn't it so how we can do that so simply you add methanol and scl so initially you can prepare methanolic scl and you can mix lipid with the methanolic scl so we are mixing here extracted lipid with the methanolic scl that will induce transesterification so when transesterification takes place there is a breaking up a bond between the glycerol and fatty acid or lipid molecule is splitting into two uh, molecule glycerol and fatty acid but these fatty acids are now are not simply fatty acids they are called as the fatty acid methyl esters because we are doing here transesterification of the lipid and in a transesterification there is a uh, splitting of lipid into glycerol and fatty acid now these fatty acids are known as the fatty acid methyl esters and these fatty acid methyl esters are used for knowing fatty acid composition okay now we are adding here hexane also why we are adding hexane here because we can use that solvent system where this fatty acid methyl esters are soluble so when we are inducing transesterification and there is the production of a fatty acid methyl esters we have to provide one more solvent so that this fatty acid methyl esters will be collected into that particular solvent one of the solvent system is a hexane so when there is a transesterification and fatty acid methyl esters are synthesized are separated outside we can say they are collected into hexane and later on we can separate out the hexane layer so again we can use the separate funnel and in separating funnel we can add all reaction mixture now here in this case the upper one layer is the fatty acid methyl esters okay this upper one layer is nothing but the fatty acid methyl esters so simply we can say these are the fem 
frames in a hexane instead of hexane you can use another uh, solvent system also where frames are soluble so here this is a frame uh, containing hexane or we can say uh, frames are available in the hexane layer so this hexane layer can be easily separate out from the reaction mixture so how would these frames are formed you can see these are the isolated or extracted lipid and these are the methanolic hcl that we have used in the presence of a catalyst here there is the splitting of the lipid into the glycerol and there is the production of a frame fatty acid methyl esters so we can remove this glycerol because this glycerol is present here in the lower layer okay and this is a biodiesel this biodiesel is nothing but fatty acid methyl esters which are present here in the hexane layer so this hexane layer is separated out which contains biodiesel that means methyl esters fatty acid methyl esters so this is a mixture of the fatty acid methyl esters we don't know what kind of a fatty acids are present what is the composition of the fatty acid how much is the percentage of individual fatty acid in this mixture that we have to know so you can use this sample frame sample into a gas chromatograph so that you will get a profile of the different fatty acid so you can use gas chromatography here so for that purpose we need uh, gas chromatograph or you can also use gcms gas chromatograph and mass spectroscopy so that you can have a library and easily you can identify the available uh, fatty acid into the mixture if simply you are using uh, gas chromatograph which is not equipped with the ms so individually we have to identify by running standard sample also so uh, we also need uh, some kind of a column known as the silica column and for uh, separating and to know the fatty acid composition particularly we cannot use any kind of a capillary column we have to use very very specific column for the fatty acid so there are a number of companies which are providing fatty acid based columns okay so uh, this is one of the company known as the restec usa based company restec where they are providing a very specific columns for the detection of the fatty acid basically so if we are using shimod gc equipped with this uh, uh, silica column capillary column basically so this kind of the uh, restec 2330 or restec biodiesel column are available so depending on the length and uh, depending on a type of a column we can purchase it from the market that we can use here for the uh, fatty acid detection purpose basically then by running gc with the help of a, a standardized program okay we can separate out the fatty acid in a mixture so you can see here this is the gas chromatograph and in this gas chromatograph we can use uh, mobile phase and the stationary phase also so we need gases hmm, for uh, running this gas chromatograph i think most of uh, students know about a gas chromatograph that can be used here for the detection and for knowing the profile of uh, fatty acid anyone knows how to work with the gas chromatograph about two three minutes i can explain that so you can see here this is a gas chromatograph in this gas chromatograph there is a injector this is the injector through this injector we can inject the sample our sample is a volatile sample why our sample is volatile now because we have converted non volatile lipid into volatile fatty acid methyl esters through the process of transesterification and now the frame which is available with us is volatile so that volatile liquid which we called frame can be injected here in the injector there is a one one more component or part in the gc known as the detector okay and this detector is connected with the computer and software of the gc for running gc okay so we have to maintain a more temperature in the gc more than 260 degrees celsius depending on a type of a program sometimes we have to maintain 280 degrees celsius temperature in a different parts so how to maintain this temperature there is a oven here this is a oven and inside oven this is a capillary column so this capillary column is uh, 
installed inside the ovan region and one end of the capillary column is connected with the injector port and second end of the column is connected with the detector port then how to maintain the temperature at a different point we can ramp the temperature also because all fatty acid cannot be detected at the same point so at a different temperature uh, we can detect different fatty acids so uh, we, we can uh, set a such a program every after one minute or every after two minutes there may be increasing the temperature by certain degree so that program can be uh, set through the software but for maintaining temperature there should be a heating and for heating purpose there should be a burning so there is a flame uh, burner here in the gas chromatograph then how we can keep it continue so we need certain gases certain gases are required here so one of the gas is hydrogen which helps for burning and there there uh, there should be a requirement of two more cylinder oxygen and we can say inert gas nitrogen okay so though uh, uh, in this figure only uh, one cylinder is shown but i can say three cylinders are required one containing hydrogen for burning and second one for uh, we can say so second one as a carrier gas so nitrogen gas is considered as a carrier gas here and one more oxygen which will help in the burning so oxygen and the nitrogen are used along with the hydrogen here so there will be continuous ignition of the uh, flame here in the, in the with the help of that flame temperature is maintained inside the gas chromatograph particularly so this is the oven part of the gas chromatograph as earlier i was talking about this oven this is the oven part inside this oven there is a column so you can see here this is the oven part of the uh, gas chromatograph and inside this oven this capillary column is connected one end of the column is connected in a detect uh, in a injector port and second end of the column is connected with the detector okay so simply this is the capillary column okay and this is a we can say syringe if we don't have auto sampler and auto injector manually we can inject our sample so we need a special kind of a syringe so this is a very special kind of a syringe hamilton syringe which is available in the market of 10 mule capacity out of that one mule sample you can inject with the help of this syringe into the injector port and it will pass through this column so column is a hollow from inside inside the column uh, this sample uh, will be reaching so when we are injecting sample that is in a liquid form which is later on converted into a gaseous form and that's why it is called as the gas chromatograph but to carry this gas that means a sample gas we are injecting here a liquid form fatty acid methyl esters which is uh, prepared by me or you is in a liquid form we are injecting here liquid with the help of a syringe so that liquid will be available here in the injector port in this injector port it is converted into a gaseous form at a high temperature and liquid is converted into gas and that gas is passing or moving into this column okay so for passing this gas we need one more carrier gas and that is a that is a nitrogen gas so nitrogen gas is called as the carrier gas which is responsible to carry along with it our sample gas so sample gas molecule will be interacting with the column component and there will be a detection of a specific kind of a fatty acid once the specific fatty acid is detected at a specific length that is known as the retention time so accordingly you will get such kind of a chromatogram so once fatty acid is detected at a certain time at a certain distance in the column you can see here the peak so that peak represent some kind of the component is detected by the detector of a gc accordingly you will get such kind of a peaks that will be representing chromatogram of the fatty acid methyl esters of your sample so how to identify which peak represent what kind of a fatty acid methyl ester so 
after running of your sample you can also run uh, standard fatty acid okay you can purchase a uh, mixture of the fatty acids are available in the market sigma is one of them supelco uh, supelco is providing such kind of a, a standard mixture of a fatty acid you can also run a standard known fatty acid in a gc by following the same program you will get again uh, such kind of a chromatogram of the known known uh, fatty acids so you having a chromatogram of your fatty acid where peaks are not identified and you also having one more chromatograph of standard fatty acid and you know the peaks this represent this kind of the fatty acid or this peak represent what kind of fatty acid accordingly by comparing the retention time of your sample with the retention time of your uh, standard fatty acid you can identify if you are using simply gc which don't have ms then it will help you to identify the peak okay of your sample so in this way uh, we will come to know uh, what is the composition of the fatty acid present in the fem with the help of uh, these two different methods open point system okay different point design and close point a uh, close system i'm not saying a point this is a closed system but photobioreactor we can grow uh, algal biomass required at industrial level remember for industrial level if you want to grow the biomass then you have to use either photobioreactor closed system or uh, pond system which is open system okay so it will help you to produce a biomass though uh, i have one uh, video i had visited one raceway pond which is the open pond where spirulina 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 is edible alga it is not generally used for the biofuel production but as i uh, i am discussing here about the raceway pond system i can show you the video that i have shoot uh, the name of that person i must acknowledge him uh, irvadkar who is dealing with the spirulina cultivation system near baramati so just i am playing that video video is a raceway pond okay which is uh, in use for biomass production of spirulina and spirulina is not generally used for uh, uh, biofuel production it is used as edible alga single cell protein but i am just showing you this video so this is a raceway pond okay for growing biomass of spirulina and this is the system for harvesting of the algal biomass that person has designed this system for the harvesting to reduce the cost that is uh, currently used by one person narendra irvadkar near baramati so uh, he has designed uh, the narendra ba irvadkar is the engineer he is not a botanist but uh, he has a interest in a uh, somewhat a different field so he has invested in the establishment of this raceway pond where he is uh, growing spirulina okay, which is not a source of a biofuel but it can be used as a uh, single cell protein source there will there will be a running of the nutrient medium along with the cell otherwise uh, there must be agitation otherwise there will be a settling of the algal cell at the bottom and uh, there may be a deterioration or a degradation of the algal cells so to avoid that this kind of the uh, pattern will are used so just i have to show here the raceway pond how it uh, works okay this is a, not a big capacity uh, pond maybe 5000 or 2000 liter capacity pond but in a lakhs of liter uh, pond there may be a more and more investment so before investing money in such kind of the open pond system we must select a potential strain with at most care remember so did the harvesting and harvesting is the most important step in the production system harvesting is simply nothing but how you are separating algal cells only from this liquid medium so your algal organism is already grown here in the liquid medium then out of this liquid how you are separating outside algal cell so this is the harvesting 
So harvesting is nothing but separation of algal cell from liquid medium. That is simply nothing but the harvesting. So this is a harvesting of a spirulina basically with the help of this cloth. And this system is nothing but a gravity filtration method. This is simply a gravity filtration method. But this is not a electric driven method. But here there is a need of a manpower. So man will pour bucket by bucket here the liquid medium along with the algal cell. And with the help of this gravity filtration method, you can get algal biomass. This is a very simple method of a harvesting. But there is an investment. For doing this, we should have manpower. So we have to hire manpower for this kind of the harvesting of the algal biomass. And this is uh, one more method, uh, lamella separator, uh, separator basically. Generally, this is used in industry. This is quite expensive and electric uh, driven method. Okay. One more method is well known to you that I have not mentioned here. With the help of a centrifuge machine, with the help of a centrifuge machine, you can harvest the biomass. But using centrifuge in a college while doing PhD, okay, is a different thing. And using centrifuge machine in your own industry where you are investing is a different thing, isn't it? Hmm? You might be knowing what I uh, want to say because using centrifuge machine, okay, there is a need of electricity. Now you are dealing with lakhs of liter of a pond. So how many days will be required to harvest the biomass if you are using centrifuge machine? Okay, centrifuge machine having a, a rotor of one liter capacity, then you have a one lakh liter pond. How many rounds will be there for harvesting one lakh liter? And for thousands of round, how many electric units will be utilized? Okay, you have to pay more as electricity bill. Okay, so we can simply use centrifuge machine, but again, centrifuge machine is expensive method of the harvesting. So accordingly, we can design a simple method, okay, that can reduce the cost of the harvesting. Because after harvesting, you can deal with the algal biomass. So this is the most important steps. Harvesting play a very important role for further uh, processing. Because if your biomass is harvested properly, then you can process it with the help of uh, uh, other methods. Okay. So to reduce cost, we have to design very specific good method of your choice, your choice, remember. And definitely at industrial level, centrifuge machine is not a good method of harvesting. This may be one of the good methods. Again, the manpower requirement is still there. Then after harvesting, you can collect the biomass and this is the harvested biomass in the form of a, we can say a paste or semi-solid biomass, still water content is there. So after harvesting, this is a wet biomass. This is a wet biomass. Water content is still there inside each and every cell. So immediately after harvesting, we have to follow drying process. If drying is not done, then there may be a degradation of the harvested biomass. Hg biomass is this biomass, harvested biomass towards drying immediately, then there may be a degradation of the biomass or there may be a fungal growth or there may be a bacterial growth, there may be degradation of the biomass. So there may be more loss of your investment. So immediately after harvesting, you have to go for drying. Now, after drying, where you are going to use that algal biomass accordingly you have to use the drying method whether whether you are using this uh, harvested biomass in a nutraceuticals or in a food or in a feed 
or in a biodiesel accordingly you can use uh, the drying method so number of drying methods are there sorry this uh, figure is not very clear this is very old figure uh, 1993 1994 in that time people were using this uh, tray method okay sun drying so very simple method is the sun drying method it can need 2 3 days for the drying okay depending on the thickness of your algal paste in the plastic tray if the thickness is this spread material is more it will take more time so depending on the material uh, present in each tray plastic tray uh, it may take 2 3 days for sun drying then this is a uh, drying known as the solar dryer solar dryer so with the help of natural light in this uh, specifically design solar dryer okay inside that the top is a glass one and this is a wooden frame okay black painted top is a glass light will enter from this glass to inside and as it is black painted uh, heat will be captured and temperature at a specific temperature uh, will be there inside the uh, this solar dryer <coughs> sorry so this solar dryer is again uh, one of the cheap method for the drying then this is a drum drying method drum drying method is also electric driven method so generally it is used for uh, for uh, production of a very fine uh, product from the algae then uh, this is again uh, advanced method spray dryer method again it is used for uh, manufacturing or a development of a very fine product from algae and this is again a very well known method known as the lyophilization if you know about the lyophilizer which is called as a freeze dryer so this is the freeze dryer uh, which cannot be easily used uh, at industrial level because big capacity freeze dryer are used and freeze dryer take uh, more time this is the time consuming process where water is easily uh, removed outside the outside the algal cell uh, through the process of sublimation where liquid which is present that means water which is present inside the uh, algal cell is evaporated or it is it is removed outside the cell okay so uh, this is a time consuming process a lyophilizer freeze dryer with the help of this lyophilization process by using this lyophilizer machine we can also dry uh, the cell this method is more expensive method <coughs> so uh, these are the drying methods so uh, these are uh, main key players in uh, deciding the cost of your biofuel okay so this was brief about biofuel production uh, from microalgae so in a brief uh, uh, we had a discussion on algae water algae okay then we had a discussion on what are the products from algae where we can use algal biomass then we came to a biofuel then uh, we discuss about what is mean by a biofuel first generation second generation third generation biofuel and fourth generation biofuel is also there where genetically modified algal strains to enhance the lipid accumulation capacity that may be a coming a uh, fourth generation biofuel uh, algae but modified genetically modified algal cells where <coughs> certain systems of algal cells are modified with the help of genetic modification more accumulation will be there that may be uh, four generation biofuel then uh, we come to uh, biofuel biogas bioethanol biomethanol hydrogen and biodiesel out of this biofuel i restricted my discussion to the biodiesel we had a discussion on biodiesel what is mean by biodiesel and how biodiesel can be prepared i discussed with you about the uh, extraction of a lipid so biodiesel can be prepared once we extract lipid so bleach and dyer method of uh, lipid extraction with the help of uh, chloroform and methanol you can also use another solvent system that uh, we discussed then once lipid is extracted there is a need convert that lipid into a volatile form to separate out a out a glycerol 
and we have to separate out fatty acid. So we perform uh, transesterification with the help of a methanolic HCL. Methanolification uh, uh, process, uh, FEM, FEM was separated out that we extracted in a hexane and glycerol layer we separated out. So hexane containing FEM, we can, uh, hexane, hexane containing FEM is nothing but the biodiesel. But if you want to know about the biodiesel, what is there in the fatty acid, you can go for a, a gas chromatograph. With the help of a gas chromatograph, you will come to know what fatty acids are there. Now, in the fatty acid, I forget to mention that point. In the fatty acid profiling, you can get three different types of a fatty acid here. here. So all these are the peaks of a fatty acid. First peak will be of a, your solvent and the rest of the peaks are of your fatty acid. Now fatty acid will be of a three type. Number one, saturated fatty acid known as SFA. Second type fatty acid, monounsaturated fatty acid, MUFA, M-U-F-A. And third type of fatty acids are nothing but PUFA, polyunsaturated fatty acid. So which one are good for the biodiesel production? Saturated fatty acid, MUFA, monounsaturated fatty acid, and PUFA, polyunsaturated fatty acid. Which fatty acids are good for biodiesel production? Anyone having any idea? They are not used here for biodiesel production. Mostly long chain fatty acid, but but saturated or monounsaturated are preferred for biodiesel production. Remember, okay. And it also depends uh, the type of country or the climate in a particular region where that biodiesel is uh, uh, is being used. So mostly PUFAs, PUFAs are used in a nutritional product development or they're having a nutritional value. Mostly uh, SFA and MUFA generally, which are having a long chain carbon uh, are preferred for the biodiesel production. So after that, uh, easily, uh, uh, easily you can extract the biodiesel, but at a commercial point of view, whether uh, your industry is uh, in a benefit or not, to do this kind of a calculation, we have to critically uh, cut down the cost in selecting the potential algal strain, biomass production system, we have standard to cut down the uh, cost of the investment, harvesting, most important point, harvesting uh, is the most important uh, process here in the production system and uh, earlier uh, I raised the one question you can also raise the question no doubt you can ask me the question available cost uh, diesel fossil fuel or petrol is 105 or 110 but uh, the cost of biodiesel is higher than the available fossil fuel why because the production cost production cost is more of a biodiesel there are number of biodiesel uh, cheaper than the available fossil fuel. It is higher, the cost of biodiesel is higher than the available petrol and diesel. And that's why it is not more popularized. But in the coming future, when there will be ending fossil fuel, this is alternative biofuel for the or biodiesel for the fossil fuel. And that and people are still working how to cut down the cost of the investment production system. So here, these in potential algal strain selection, biomass production, harvesting and drying. Here we have to cut down the investment cost because uh, about 84 to 93 percent investment is there at these processes. <coughs> Preparation of a biodiesel is easy, but these processes where we have to invest more here there is a more cost investment and that's why biodiesel cost is a higher so we have to uh, do some kind of a modifications in the system here in the production system so that cost will be reduced okay and that's why people are still working on a various kind of aspect to reduce the cost so thank you very much for now